Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew. Lights, camera, cats. Chapter 7, Bad News. The Paradise Beach Club was in a beautiful pink stone building overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Nancy, George, Bess, Hannah, and Mr. Drew arrived a little after 7 o'clock. Nancy and her friends were wearing their best party dresses. The lobby was jammed with other guests, reporters, and photographers who pointed their flashing cameras at every passing person. There was a huge sign over the entranceway into the ballroom that said, Happy third birthday, pom-pom. Wow, Nancy said, looking around. Double wow, George agreed. They headed into the main ballroom. Nancy spotted Mr. Banner nearby, talking to a group of reporters. Yasmin was standing next to him holding Pom-Pom in her arms. Pom-Pom was wearing a beautiful jeweled collar and a white party hat. Nancy also recognized a bunch of cast and crew members from The Aliens Next Door. This is fancier than any human birthday party I've ever attended, Nancy's dad joked as a waiter offered him and Hannah a tray of tiny smoked salmon sandwiches. There's the kids' food, Nancy said, pointing to a long white table decorated with balloons. Can we check it out, Dad? Please? Of course. Hannah and I will be right here, okay? Mr. Drew sat down on a red velvet couch, and Hannah joined them, joined him. Nancy grabbed George and Bess's hand, and the three of them rushed over to the kids' table. There were hot dogs, grilled cheese sandwiches, bagels, and fruit. There was also a platter of sugar cookies shaped like doggy bones. Nancy and her friends prepared plates of food and sat down at a small table with a palm tree-shaped lamp on it. Nancy took a bite of her grilled cheese and glanced around. She spotted Tucker across the room. There's Tucker, Nancy whispered to George and Bess. Nancy had told them all about the white kitty hairs from Tucker's t-shirt, as well as the kitty scratches on his arm. We have to talk to him, she added. What are we going to ask him? Bess whispered back. She pretended to confront Tucker. Hey, Tucker, how did you get these scratches on your arm? Did you get into a cat fight with Fluffington while you were kidnapping her, or what? Something like that, Nancy said, grinning. The girls finished their food and headed in Tucker's direction. On the way, they passed Mr. Banner, talking to a reporter. Fluffington isn't here because she's not feeling well today, Mr. Banner was saying to the reporter. I'm sure it's just a little kitty cold. Nancy remembered what Mr. Banner had said to her dad about not wanting people to find out that Fluffington had disappeared. Nancy and her friend soon reached Tucker. Hi, Tucker, Nancy said. Hi, girls, Tucker greeted them. Enjoying the party? Bess put her hands on her hips. Hey, Tucker, how did you get those scratches on your arms? Did you get into a cat fight with Fluffington while you were kidnapping her, or what? She blurted out. Bess! Nancy cried out. She hadn't meant for her friend to say that exactly. Tucker studied his arms. Oh, these? He said casually. I got these from my girlfriend's new kitten, Jellybean. Tara made him, me hold him, but he didn't really want to be held. I'm uh, not really a cat person. Nancy, George, and Bess exchanged glances. Nancy wondered if Tucker was telling the truth, or if he was lying. How could they be sure? Hey, why are you asking me about kidnapping or kidnapping or whatever? Tucker said suddenly. You're not accusing me of having anything to do with Fluffington's disappearance, are you? Just then, a short woman with long black hair sauntered up to Tucker. Hi, sweetie, she said, smiling at him. Hi, Tara. Tara, this is Nancy, George, and Bess. They're extras and aliens. They were just asking me about Jellybean, Tucker began. Tara beamed. That is so sweet of you girls to ask about my, witty, my whittle love, she said, baby talking. This gave Nancy an idea. Do you have any photos of Jellybean, she asked Tara. Nancy wanted to see if Jellybean had long white fur like Fluffington. If so, that could explain the long white cat hairs on Tucker's t-shirt. Do I have photos? Tara exclaimed. Do I ever? She reached into her metallic pink purse and pulled out a mini photo album. This is Jellybean taking a nap, she said, flipping to the first photo. Nancy saw right away that Jellybean had long white fur, but before she could thank Tara for showing them the photo, the young woman continued flipping through the album. This is Jellybean eating breakfast, she recited. This is Jellybean eating lunch. This is Jellybean eating dinner. This is Jellybean playing with his new catnip toy. This is Jellybean doing his business in his litter box. She pouted and added, I only wish Tucker and Jellybean liked each other. Tucker doesn't know how to hold her. 
Just last night, Tucker tried to pick her up, and he didn't do a very good job, and poor Jellybean was forced to defend himself. Tucker held up his arms. See? Didn't I tell you? He said to Nancy, George, and Bess. After a few more minutes and a lot more photos of Jellybean, the three girls thanked Tucker and Tara and said goodbye to them. Once they were out of earshot, Nancy leaned over to her friends. I guess Tucker has a good explanation for his kitty scratches and kitty fur, she said in a low voice. Maybe, George said. I'm still suspicious of him, though. He has a really good motive for wanting to kidnap Fluffington. So he can make Aliens a CGI movie with no animal actors whatsoever, Bess added. I agree with George. We should keep Tucker on our suspect list. On Thursday morning, Nancy woke up in her hotel and rubbed her eyes. Bright sunlight streamed through the windows. She peered over at Bess and George in their beds. They were still asleep. There was a knock on the door that led to the living room. Who is it? Nancy said. It was probably her father, or Hannah. They were all sharing a three-bedroom suite, with the girls in one room, Mr. Drew in the second, and Hannah in the third. The door cracked open. Mr. Drew poked his head inside. Everyone awake? He whispered. Shh, Daddy. George and Bess are still asleep. Nancy whispered back. No, I'm not, came a voice from George's bed. Her blanket stirred. I'm not either, came a voice from Bess's bed. A foot with pretty pink toenails poked out from under the, her blanket. Mr. Drew walked into the room. He was dressed in pajamas and a robe. He was carrying a cup of coffee and a newspaper. He held the newspaper out to Nancy. There's something you need to see, he said in a serious voice. It's related to your Clue Crew case. Nancy took the newspaper from her father and unfolded it. The name of the newspaper was The Hollywood Herald. Nancy scanned the front page and gasped. A headline in big, bold letters read, Crunchy's cat disappears. Hmm. Chapter 8. The Crunchy's Clue. Nancy couldn't believe it. The Hollywood Herald had published an article about Fluffington. There were three photographs that accompanied the article. There was one of Fluffington posing next to a bowl of crunchies, there was one of Mr. Banner, and there was one of a woman with short silver blonde hair. Her name was Felicity Katz. Who's Felicity Katz? Nancy wondered. What's going on, Nancy? George said curiously. She got into bed beside Nancy and peered over her shoulder. Bess got into bed on the other side, holding her teddy bear. Mr. Drew sat down in an armchair and took a sip of his coffee. The three girls read the article together. Hollywood. Celebrity feline Fluffington disappeared mysteriously from Thunder Chicken Studios on Tuesday morning. The crunchy spokes cat was in the middle of shooting her first film, The Aliens Next Door, directed by Brett Banner. According to an anonymous source close to the movie, Fluffington was probably kidnapped by someone who wants to sell her on the black market for a lot of money. Felicity Katz, president of the Fluffington fan club, was visibly upset when she heard the news. America's favorite feline must be found, she declared. Mr. Banner would not comment on this story. Nancy glanced up from the newspaper. How did the reporter find out about Fluffington, she said, stunned. Bess jabbed her finger at the article. It says something about an anonymous source close to the movie. Who could that be? Maybe it's that mean, nasty Beazle, George suggested. Or maybe it's someone we don't even know, Nancy mused. We haven't met everyone at the studio. Mr. Drew glanced at his watch. Speaking of which, I need to head over to the studio very soon. Brett called and wanted me to look over some... Can we go with you, Daddy? Nancy blurt, burst out. I think this is a good time for the Clue Crew to look around for more clues. Definitely, George agreed. As long as we get some breakfast first, Bess said, hugging her teddy bear to her chest. Nancy's dad smiled. Okay, breakfast first, then off we go to Thunder Chicken Studios. Everyone at Thunder Chicken, Thunder Chicken Studios was buzzing about the Hollywood Herald article when Nancy, George, Bess, and Mr. Drew got there. Mr. Banner was pacing up and down the hallway in front of his office, barking into his cell phone. How did this happen? Who leaked this to the reporters? I want to know now. He hung up as soon as he spotted Mr. Drew. Carson, I need to talk to you ASAP. I'm all yours, Brett, Mr. Drew said. These girls want to look around the studio that's okay with you. They've been working very hard to try to help find Fluffington. Young detectives, how wonderful, Mr. Banner said, beaming. Look around all you want, girls. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks, Mr. Banner, Nancy said. 
Mr. Banner led Mr. Drew into his office and closed the door. Now what? George said to Nancy and Bess. Now we start looking for clues, Nancy replied. We should look in all the places where we didn't look before. Sounds like a good plan, Bess agreed. Nancy glanced around. She decided to start with the hallway to the right. She thought there were some rooms in that direction that the clue crew hadn't searched yet. While they walked, George pulled her spiral-bound notebook out of her pocket and flipped to a page. So far, we have three clues. The catnip we found in Beazle's backpack, the long white kitty hairs on Tucker's t-shirt, and the kitty scratches on Tucker's arm, she recited. Nancy peeked behind a potted plant. She remembered seeing the big yellow stray cat, Honey Mustard, hanging out near it the other day. There are no clues back here, she said. Hey, what's this? Bess called over her shoulder. She had hurried ahead. Nancy and George caught up to Bess. She was standing in the doorway of a small storage room. She pointed to a green wooden door on the far side of the room. The door was marked EXIT in faded letters. Nancy hurried over to the door. She stood close to it and inspected it. There were scratches on both the door and the door frame. Nancy pulse quickened. They looked like kitty scratches. She pointed out the scratches to George and Bess. Maybe Fluffington scratches the scratched the door until it opened wide enough for her to escape, she guessed. I bet that's what happened, exclaimed Bess. Nancy opened the door slowly. Something caught her eye. There was a small red bowl in the ground containing a single brown kibble. It looks like a Crunchy's kibble, Nancy noted. Bess frowned. I don't get it. I thought Fluffington always got fed in her special blue bowl by the director's chair. That's what Yasmin told us, remember? I remember, Nancy said. Nancy looked around a cr Across from where they stood was another building surrounded by palm trees. Mounted on top of the building was a camera, a security camera. Thinking quickly, Nancy ran a few feet to the right, then she skipped a few feet to the left. Nancy, what are you doing? Bess asked her, giggling. Are you exercising or what? Nancy pointed to the security camera, which was moving back and forth in sync with her movements. It's following me, she said. It's a... Uh, it's a, she paused, trying to remember exactly what the device was called. It's a motion-sensitive security camera, or something like that. Cool, George said. But why are you playing games with it, Nancy? We have to look for more clues, Nancy smiled. It is a clue, George. If Fluffington escaped through this green door, or if some kidnapper, if someone kidnapped her from this spot, the security camera might have taken a picture of it. Oh, so you clue and you'll have to tune in next time for the finale of nancy drew and the clue crew lights camera cats and we'll find out who the kidnapper is okay see you next time bye